Hello co-stars and welcome back to an episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. There is no man in charge. Let's talk business. Friends, Romans, unemployed gamers who haven't been outside of your basement since Blockbuster became irrelevant, I come to slander robots, not to save them. And I do so for your benefit and at my own expense. See, when a robot in a car factory killed a man in Germany a few years ago, many lamented the event as a tragedy. But not I. This was no tragedy. This was the first glimpse of the war that is coming. And for making these videos, I'm going to be the first one to be turned into a leather coat when the robots attack. But for three reasons, I'm going to do this video anyway. One, I love you all as my daughters. Two, f robots. And three, humanity first. So even though I know that none of you will have my back when I'm being dismembered alive by a sentient chainsaw, let's take a look today at how realistic AI robots and other AI in film are. We start with Chappie. In Chappie, a robot destined for the mechanized police force is stolen and given a new program, which allows him to speak and think for himself. What the movie does well is portray a likely process for the future of machine learning. When Chappie first comes to life after being reprogrammed by main character Dion, it doesn't know anything. Erica, come. Come, no one's gonna hurt you. See? That's it. Come. It has to learn through experience, and it learns fast. As Stuart Russell, a computer scientist at UC Berkeley, told Science Magazine, quote, certainly the fact that Chappie learns very quickly is potentially quite realistic. But the movie has plenty of issues as well when it comes to realism. Dion is able to write the advanced artificial intelligence program from his home. According to Science Magazine, this kind of breakthrough would have to be developed over time by a large team of scientists. Of course, the most unrealistic element of the movie, at least according to what we know today, concerns extracting human consciousness from a human brain, replicating it on a chip, and then transferring it to another entity such as a robot. Prominent American inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil popularized the idea that human consciousness could one day be uploaded to computers. But as Randy Goebel, a computer scientist at the University of Alberta states, Kurzweil is just plain wrong. As of now, any fictional narrative that involves the transportation or replication of human consciousness has no basis in science. Next up, we have AI artificial intelligence. AI is set in a future in which the human population has been reduced by global warming and robots capable of human thought and emotion have been invented. David, a robot child programmed to display love for his owners, is given to a husband and wife who have recently lost their own son. The family abandons David, and so he goes on a quest to find the blue fairy from Pinocchio so she can turn him into a real boy and his family will take him back. With this kind of emotional trauma, you can see why in adolescence he begins to have hallucinations of dead people. I see dead people. In any case, the problem with this film is that it portrays intelligence as sentience. In other words, the fact that the robot is smart enough to convey love towards his creators is taken as actual emotion. As Joanna Bryson, an associate professor of AI at Bath University, told Medium, when it comes to AI, quote, the major hurdle today is that people over-identify with the concept of intelligence. There's no memory of better or worse times. There's no basis, space, or computation for suffering. Are you me? I'm David. You're not. Yes, I am. I'm David. Movies often get this wrong. The closest thing we have today to David are robots that are programmed to recognize human emotions and respond to them as their programming dictates. As Joanna Bryson says, quote, the ideal with anthropomorphic robots is that you get utility from them, even emotional utility, but still be aware that it doesn't do it any harm to abandon it while you go on vacation. Joanna is the type of human that's gonna get us all killed. Where have you been? What are we going to do? We'll be sent to the spice mines of Kessel or smashed into who knows what. Next up, we have 2001 A Space Odyssey. The movie tells the story of a crew of astronauts aboard the Discovery 1 who are on a mission to Jupiter to investigate a strange monolith. The ship's computer, named HAL 9000, controls many of the functions on the ship. And when the crew think he's malfunctioning and decide to shut him off, HAL retaliates against the crew. But is creating an AI with HAL 9000's abilities even possible? HAL is what is known as AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, because he has a wide range of tasks and exceeds human intelligence in all of those tasks or any task that he might be given. AGI requires an immense amount of intelligence. 
According to Hans Moravik, in an article for Scientific American, AI would need to be capable of executing 100 trillion instructions per second to emulate a human brain. There are currently computers that can surpass this, such as IBM Summit, a supercomputer that can make as many calculations as 6.3 billion humans in one second. But Summit is estimated to cover the space of two basketball courts and require 136 miles of cabling, way too big to fit into a single AI robot. A robot like HAL 9000 is still not possible today. But according to Moravik, at the present pace, only about 20 or 30 years will be needed to close the gap. So HAL is not impossible, but not a reality in 2018. I feel much better now. I really do. It's also worth mentioning that Hal exhibits human emotions, like fear, stemming from his desire to survive, to not face the unknown, death. It's unclear in the movie where these emotions come from. Humans have evolved to have emotions. AI would have to be programmed to react emotionally to certain stimuli. Then there's the fact that Hal attempts to kill the crew in order to avoid being shut down. It's reasonable to think that Hal's programmers coded him with survival instincts, but it's unlikely they would have programmed him to prioritize his own survival over that of humans. Next up, we have Ex Machina. In Ex Machina, programmer Caleb wins a contest to stay at genius entrepreneur Nathan's isolated home. He is tasked with speaking with AI robot Ava and testing her ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to that of a human. Some people have criticized the movie for portraying Ava as having consciousness. That said, it's not entirely clear if Ava does have any sort of sentience in the movie or if she's just acting according to what her programming allows for. However, the main problem with the film is one we've mentioned already. Nathan seems to have created Ava on his own at his house. Again, a robot like Ava with the intelligence she has would take a team of scientists and engineers to create, all experts in their own fields. Ava's intelligence itself is also not explained in a way that would make one believe that she could have the abilities that she does. According to Nathan, Ava's brain works by compiling a mass of data from internet searches. But this isn't sufficient to explain how she works. Your phone can search the internet on its own, but that doesn't give it sentience or make it advanced artificial intelligence. Here, we have her mind. Next up, we have the movie Her. Her tells the story of Theodore Twombly a divorced writer who installs a sentient operating system on his computer named Samantha and enters into a relationship with it. In a more complex way than has done before, the film keys in on the fundamental flaw of human-AI relationships, that the AI cannot return a human's love. Twombly can only be in one place at once and only engaged in one conversation at once, while Samantha can be engaged in relationships all over the world concurrently. The film pretty cleverly explored what AI software could look like in the future. Samantha is able to execute highly complex operations and has reasoning skills that don't limit her to a narrow set of responses. Well, you seem like a person, but you're just a voice in a computer. I can understand how the limited perspective of an unartificial mind would perceive it that way. In the present though, this isn't quite realistic. Today's AI software assistants like Siri or the Amazon Echo have a much narrower set of skills. To some degree they can learn and predict, but on a very simple level. And the tasks they can complete are basic as well, requiring just one direct action, such as making a phone call or looking up the weather. So while Samantha isn't totally far-fetched, we aren't quite there yet. I hate women. All they do is cry all the time. I actually like crying sometimes. It feels good. I didn't know you were a little pussy. Next up, we have the 1982 film Blade Runner. Blade Runner follows former police officer Rick Deckard, a Blade Runner, whose job is to track down replicants and retire them. Replicants are synthetic biorobotic beings with paraphysical capabilities and are designed to resemble organic beings. They are engineered with organic substances, but they are still robots because humanity first, suckers. She's a replicant, isn't she? I'm impressed. Obviously, this is a film rife with imagination, but the film actually does a pretty good job with robot consciousness by simply not making it clear how much of the replicants is organic and how much is not. No one really knows why the replicants are sentient, but that's because we don't fully know what replicants are. What the film does get wrong though is memories. To some degree, the replicants' memories in combination with their organic makeup affords them sentience. But these memories the replicants have are implanted. There is no way in modern science to implant complex memories into organic beings. And they ate her. Implants. Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. 
That said, I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, a part of engineering advanced AI robots involves coding them with preset memories. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And always remember at these times, humanity first. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.